Hi, this is Debbie, and today I have an easy watercolour card to share with you. I know some people are apprehensive of watercolouring, seeing it as a skill they don't have. However, believe me, there are lots of different ways to incorporate watercolours into your card making, which don't require being the greatest artist. When I first got the watercolour bug, using a white heat embossed floral image was my go-to for quick and easy, reliable results. This video is part of a blog hop to celebrate the new Fluttering By release from Sansa Stamp. I'll tell you more about that at the end of this video, but for now let's crack on with this card. From the new release I'm using the gorgeous Centre Cut Flowers background stamp. This is a red rubber cling melt stamp that can be stamped as a whole or equally the centre portion can be popped out and you can use the wreath or floral focal point separately. I choose to use the central part for my card today. I've placed the centre portion of the stamp in the Mini Misty along with a piece of Archer's Hot Press watercolour card. I've chosen to use hot press card as this is smooth enough to get a good impression when stamped. I treated the card with a powder tool to prevent random embossing powder sticking where I didn't want it and then stamped the image in clear embossing ink before sprinkling with white embossing powder and heat setting. It's difficult to see the white embossed lines on the watercolour card but as I start to paint the lines will resist the watercolour and you'll see the paint pooling in the wells left by the raised white embossed lines. This stamp is perfect for white heat embossing as the lines of the image clearly define the flowers, leaves and berries. In addition, the images are large enough so that after embossing there will still be an area left to colour. I'm using tubes of Daniel Smith watercolours that I have squeezed into small containers known as pans. I let the paint dry for a day or so and then when I want to paint I simply re-wet the pans and the paint reactivates. It's a very convenient and space saving way to store your paints and over time I've realised that I prefer the full pan size rather than the smaller half pan as you can squish your brush around in the colour to pick up more paint. I have a small porcelain palette to mix colours but a white side plate would work equally as well. I prefer mixing on white porcelain as the paint mixes well without beading up and the white base means you'll have a true reflection of the colour. Having said that, I usually have a small piece of scrap paper watercolour card hanging around that I test colours on before using them. I'm using a combination of the wet on wet technique where you wet the paper first and then bring in colour and also the direct to paper method where you add the paint first and then pull out the colour with a damp brush. I'm trying not to be too precise as I want to have a loose relaxed look and also applying paint in this way is fun and easy to do. Having got a light layer of colour on the flowers and leaves I then worked on the background. I wanted this card to be bright and happy and I thought a blue background would be perfect for this. I mixed up a dilute blue colour and painted this in the gaps between the images and also around the outside of the bouquet where I blended the paint out with lots of water to give a soft outline. The flowers and leaves had now dried and I went back in with more concentrated colour, adding layers where the shadows would naturally fall, such as the centre of the flower. I left the outside edges of the petals as the lightest as you would expect these areas of the flower to catch the light. I'm not worrying about blending the edges of these darker layers as I want that loosely applied look. Having finished all the painting, I dried the panel with a heat gun and then gave a good splattering of Perfect Pearls. I made this solution up in a mini mister with a scoop of Perfect Pearls and then topped up with water. I also added a splatter of paint left in my palette and then dried the panel again. I die cut the panel with a wonky rectangle die and then moved on to the sentiment. I'm using the lovely script Mom Die, which has a fine die cut Mom word, as well as the background die for the word too. I didn't want to cover up too much of the flowers, so I chose to use the Mom word on its own without the background piece. However, I die cut it from slate card so that it stood out from the busy background clearly. I added foam tape to the back of the die cut and I did it over the lower right of the flowers. I decided to combine the Mom die cut with a sentiment from the new Messages for Every Day set. I love to add skinny sentiments to my cards and I can see me using this set a lot. It has a great range of sentiment options, many of which would work with this mum die cut. I chose to keep it simple with the I love you so much sentiment. I stamped the sentiment on more watercolour card so that the colours and textures were the same throughout. I treated the card with a powder tool first and then stamped in clear embossing ink before sprinkling with antique gold embossing powder and heat setting. I used a scalpel and a metal edge ruler to trim the sentiment to a skinny strip and then I did it with foam tape so that it overlapped the mum die cut. I added more foam tape to the back of the watercolour panel and I did to a fog card base. 
I used a few sequins from the new Peony Bouquet and Butterfly Kisses sequins pack that are kept in place with Ranger Multimedia Matte. And that completes this watercoloured Mother's Day card with white heat embossed lines making for quick, easy and yet reliable watercolouring. I'll leave links in the YouTube description below to the products that I've used today as well as a link to the coordinating blog post over at LimeDoodleDesign.com and that's where you'll find more details of the blog hop to celebrate the new fluttering by release from Sam's Stamp. I want to thank you for joining me and if you've enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you subscribe to this channel. Thanks and I'll see you next time.